Hi, and thank you for watching this flash talk. My name is Kato Dow. I'm a postdoc at George Washington University. And today I'll be talking about a project that we're working on with some collaborators at NOAA, estimating the health and economic benefits of air quality now casting using a geostationary satellite. For this work, we're part of a large team working to quantify benefits of future geostationary observations of atmosphere composition. And the reason that this team exists is because NOAA is currently planning its next generation of geostationary satellites for the 2030 era. These are expected to be a continuation and expansion of the GOES-R series, currently called GeoExo. And our role on this team is to quantify the potential benefits of GeoExo data for health relevant applications. This project is very new and ongoing, and there's a lot that we want to explore in terms of the health relevant applications of geostationary satellite data. But what we focused on so far and what I'll focus this talk on is the benefits of geostationary data for air quality now casting of PM2.5. So for this project, we conducted a preliminary case study of the health benefits of geostationary based now casting in California in 2020. And I'll outline the steps of that here. So we have two data sets of daily mean surface PM2.5, estimating using two different sets of satellite based aerosol optical depth. These were generated by our collaborators at NOAA. So our first set of data is the geo case, is our geo case which estimates daily mean surface PM2.5 from aerosol optical depth on a geostationary satellite. <clears throat> so there's observations of AOD um, during all daylight hours. Our second data set represents our LEO case um, and relies on aerosol optical depth from a polar orbiting satellite, so it only has one observation per day. This time series on the right is showing what that estimated surface PM2.5 looks like in Los Angeles, California for the year 2020. Next, we reduce concentrations on alert days based on studies showing that the public modifies their behavior to reduce their exposure when they're alerted about poor air quality. So now you can see in this time series in orange that I've added on the right, that we're reducing the PM2.5 concentrations on days when the PM is exceeding a threshold of 35 micrograms per meter cubed because we're assuming on those days alerts are issued and people are modifying their behavior to reduce exposure. We also translate this exposure reduction to an annual average so assuming someone is really diligent and responding to these alerts every time, um, how would that reduce their annual average exposure to PM2.5? So these maps on the bottom are showing annual average PM2.5 in California in 2020 and how that's reduced via these air quality alerts and exposure modification in the LEO case and the GEO case. And then finally, we conducted a health impact assessment using these different sets of PM2.5 exposures. Uh, to estimate asthma emergency room visits attributable to daily PM2.5 exposure, as well as deaths attributable to long-term PM2.5 exposure. So this bar chart is showing the results of that health impact assessment for asthma emergency room visits. So first, if we look at the base case in the gray bar, we see that in California in 2020, there were about 6,000 PM2.5 attributable asthma emergency room visits. And we see in the colored bars now that that total is reduced in this scenario of air quality alerts and behavior modification in both the LEO case and the GEO case. Um, it might be slightly hard to tell, but it's reduced slightly more in the GEO case compared to the LEO case, where there's 55 additional averted asthma emergency stream visits in the GEO case compared to the LEO case. And this is associated with a savings of about $28,000 based on the cost of emergency room visits. And the reason that we have fewer um, asthma emergency room visits in the geo case compared to the leo case is because our geostationary data set has more spatial coverage each day because it has a better chance of getting an observation of aod because it has observations during all daylight hours compared to the leo case where there's only one observation per day so if that observation is missed say because of clouds then we don't get an estimate of pm 2.5 on that day so the geostationary spatial coverage is identifying more alert days leading to additional behavior modification in our scenario, thus reducing PM2.5 health impacts. We do the same analysis um, to estimate PM2.5 attributable mortality, again, using that long-term exposure. And here we estimate that there are 300 additional averted deaths in the GEO case over the LEO case with an associated savings of $2.9 billion based on the value of statistical life. And like I said at the beginning, this project is very much ongoing. So I've just outlined here some of the next steps that we have in mind with this work. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments about this work, please reach out to me via email or at the HeyCast meeting. Thank you.